Hello, hello, my people. It's Barb. And today, we got a bit of a story. Not sure if any of you guys remember the story from a couple years ago with Micah and James Goffer rehoming their adopted child. If you have heard before, sit and listen out, please. If you've not listened before, <laughs> Or not known about them before, you're gonna know now. So Micah and James Stoffer began posting on YouTube as a family in 2014. They shared everything from products that they enjoyed to tearful stories about miscarriages and parenting difficulties. In 2017, the Stoffers traveled with their three biological children to China to adopt Huxley. They posted frequently about his challenges from the behavioral impact of his trauma, from events leading up to the adoption, to his medical prognosis. They showed his meltdowns and spoke openly about having a difficult time parenting him. The Stoffers' popularity grew as they posted about Huxley, and eventually they ban began getting sponsorships from different brands. They then had another biological child and began discussing the possibility of adopting another child. Fans scrutinized them closely and eventually noticed that in one video, Huxley's car seat seemed to have disappeared from their car. So from many, many, many people messaging them, they then, they explained what happened. But we see how brands encourage their content and how fans cheered them on. Then also started to have expectations. Then we see how more people in the YouTube community started sleuthing and seeing things that disturbed them, which is how the whole story eventually became exposed. So in 2020, successful family vloggers, Michael and Jane Stauffer made a startling announcement that would end Micah's influencer career. They stated they were rehoming their autistic four-year-old son, Huxley, after nearly three years of his adoption from China. The child had been front and center of many of their parenting and lifestyle videos before suddenly vanishing from their posts. Many among their one million followers on Instagram and YouTube started asking why, which led to jarring confession that prompted swift and widespread backlash. Now, four years later, they are the subject of a new three-part docuseries that is premiering at the Tribeca Film Festival. And it is an update on our family, which takes its name from the title the Stoffers used on their infamous YouTube video in which the revealed Huckley State is directed by Rachel Mason and focuses on the YouTube family from Ohio as it seeks to expose the hidden and in plain sight, unregulated family vlogging feature about the Stoffers and made her want to dig deeper. At the time, she didn't know much about family channels on YouTube, but approached the creator ecosystem with true fascination. She stated, when I started to dive in, I felt like I was an anthropologist watching an unknown species from a very far distance with binoculars. And what is most important to me was to start getting closer and to do so, I wanted to meet the people actually operating in this world. I wanted to understand their appeal and how they maintain their audiences. To do more than just rehash a terrible situation and the critical response to it, Rachel Mason felt she needed to hear from someone who had experience with the dissolution of an adoption to be able to proper tell the story. The docu-series team spoke with a mother who posted on Reddit that she, Micah Stafford, her child. In her post, she felt the need to write, no death threats, please, 
which I found to be one of the sadly consistent themes in general in the film. How conditioned people have become to getting the most hostile kinds of responses, Mason said. She was able to expose just how unthinkable it is for a family to grappling with that decision. Another voice Rachel found essential in explaining the stop of story was Hannah Cho, a YouTuber who is also a transracial adoptee. Human, <laughs> Hannah Cho, a YouTuber who is also a trans transracial adoptee. Hannah, a YouTuber who, who articulated how the YouTube community had carefully examined their channel in the months leading up to their video and how their audience had consumed their content. She helped to explain the story with a kind of personal nuance that came from her own story. Ultimately, Rachel Mason doesn't see the project as an expose on the stalkers or family vloggers, rather the reactionary and polarized system that currently exists on the internet. She stated, expectations for creators are really high and I fear that we have set ourselves up collectively to become more extreme in our behavior. I hope that we find a way to become more humans through the telling of this story. In a trailer for the forthcoming documentary, fellow vloggers detailed the events leading up to Huxley's disappearance from the Stalker's YouTube channel, why experts emphasize just how much money parents can make from posting content about their channel online. The Stalkers, who also have four biological children, they had seen numerous medical professionals regarding Huxley's severe needs. I decided he had a lot more special needs that we weren't aware of. In international adoption, sometimes there's unknowns and things that are not transparent on file. Once Huxley came home, there was a lot more special needs that we weren't aware of and were not told. For us, it's been really hard hearing from the medical professionals a lot of their feedback and things that have been upsetting. We've never wanted to be in this position, and we've seen we've been trying to get his needs met and help him out as much as possible. Micah explained in the video that they believed their son needed more medical assistance, but maintained that there were. I hate this part. She states there wasn't an ounce of our body that doesn't love Huxley with all of our being. Then why couldn't you get your own help to take care of this boy? You just didn't want to put in the work. You basically ruined this child. Okay. Do I feel like a failure as a mom, said Stoffer? Yeah, like 500%, she said, before revealing that Huxley found a new forever family. With the help of the adoption agency, they found somebody that they felt would be ultimately the best fit. And he is thriving. He's very happy. And he's doing very well. And his new mommy has medical professional training, and it is a very good fit. At the time, the Stauffer shared the update to their nearly 1 million subscribers, more than 700,000 on the family's vlog channel, The Stauffer Life. They first announced their decision to adopt a social on social media in July 2016 when they shared a YouTube video titled Big Announcement. Baby number four. The Stoffers posted nearly 30 videos throughout their adoption journey, culminating in a YouTube video titled Huxley's Emotional Adoption Video. Gotcha Day, China Adoption. The video, which was posted in October 17th, had been viewed more than a million times prior to Micah permanently deleting her channel. The Stoffers used a GoFundMe page to help raise money to pay for Huxley's adoption from China, and the couple reportedly earned a total of $800, while they said the adoption was $42,000. In another video uploaded in September 2019 titled, Emotional China Adoption Two Years Home, the parenting blogger said Huxley had been in applied behavioral analysis therapy since his autism diagnosis and was doing so well.
the YouTuber explicitly revealed the extent of Huxley's needs in an article for Parade Magazine that year. Saying that he was diagnosed with a stroke in utero that has level 3 autism and sensory processing disorder. Micah stated in a 2017 YouTube video featured in the documentary, I don't know what his medical diagnosis is going to look like. How much schooling will he need? Will he need a little bit more hands-on? Will he be delayed? She later added, but if anything, my child is not returnable, she said in a separate vlog. Only need that our little boy has is a nice family that really truly cares about him. Apparently, what wasn't the scoffers? Micah's final photo of Huxley was posted to her Instagram, where she had more than 168,000 people in March of 2020. <clears throat> Here we one second. I needed to get a drink. So two months before they were revealed, he had been placed in a new home. Last month was the hardest month I have ever had as a mama. And I'm still working through all of it. But instead of leading with my heart, I'm following yours. She captioned the post. Unsurprisingly, the revelation sparked backlash across all the corners of the internet, and several users claimed the stalkers had used Huxley's adoption for clicks and likes and praise, while others called on brands to end sponsorship deals with the family. One person said, Micah Stauffer really just gave her kid away because adoption wasn't the dreamy aesthetic journey like she thought it'd be. These Instagram moms are another level of gross. That poor, sweet little boy. An investigation was later launched by Ohio authorities in June 2020 into the well-being of both Huxley and the couple's four biological children. The Delaware County Sheriff's Office said it received several inquiries regarding the welfare of the then four-year-old. In a statement to the Independent at the time, a spokesperson for the department said, our primary concern is for the well-being of this child, as well as the other children in the household. Our investigation is ongoing and will include contact with all the children to ensure their safety. All adoption cases are confidential and must go through a thorough process with a process with specific requirements and safeguards. In private adoptions, there are the same legal requirements that must be adhered to. These include home studies as well as background checks on the adopting parent. And in this case, we are confident that the appropriate process is occurring. The spokesperson also confirmed that Huxley was not missing and that both parties are being represented by attorneys to ensure full compliance with the court process. According to attorneys for the Stoffers, the process of finding a new home for Huxley did not include any considerations for placement at the foster system, but rather to hand select a family who is equipped to handle Huxley's needs. One month later, the Delaware County Sheriff's Office announced that it would not be filing charges against the Stoffers. In the lengthy Instagram post shared in June 2020, Micah addressed the widespread backlash and apologized for all of the hurt she caused her fans and followers. This decision has caused so many people heartbreak, and I'm sorry for letting down so many women that looked up to me as a mother, she stated. I'm sorry for the confusion and pain I have caused, and I'm sorry for not being able to tell more of my story from the beginning. I could have never anticipated the incidents which occurred on a private level to ever have happened, and I was trying my best to navigate the hardest thing I have ever been through in my life. Micah continued acknowledging that she was not selective or fully equipped or prepared when she started the adoption process, and that she needed more training. I can't say I wish this never happened because I'm still so glad Huxley is here getting all of the help he needs. I also know that even though he is happier in his new home and doing better that he still experienced trauma. 
I'm sorry no adoptee deserves any more trauma. I wanted to help so bad. I was willing to bring home any child that needed me. For this, I was naive, foolish, and arrogant. In that statement, Micah also expressed her admiration and respect for every adoptee, adoption parent, and special needs parent before addressing a couple complete rumors about her family's decision to find Huxley a new home. She clarified that they didn't share content about their adoption journey to gain wealth and denied claims the family was ever under any type of investigation by authorities. While we did receive a small portion of money from videos featuring Huxley and his journey, every penny and much more went back into his care. She added that getting Huxley the care he needed was very expensive. Micah concluded her statement, which had comments disabled. We love Huxley and know that this was the right thing for him and his future. Praying that Huxley only has the best future in the entire world. Following the announcement, the couple's lawyers emphasized their ultimate hope to provide Huxley with the best possible care and treatment. The lawyers also stated, we are privy to this case and given the facts at hand, we feel this was the best decision for Huxley. In coming to know our clients, we know they are loving family and very caring parents that would do anything for their children. And since the controversy, the Stoffers have kept a low profile on social media. Micah deleted her YouTube channel, and her last post on Instagram remains her 2020 apology statement. Her husband James continues to post on YouTube, on YouTube under the channel Stoffer Garage, where he shares videos of himself car flipping, cleaning, and detailing to his 1 million subscribers. Meanwhile, Huxley's new adoptive mother, who works as an accessible education teacher, changed his name to the Chinese name Yu Lin after his adoption in 2020. She's continued to share photos of him on Instagram, where he's seen surrounded by his adoptive foster siblings. So I just want to say, I know that Huxley, he's four years old now, and I know that he has autism and has sensory disorders. And I'm familiar a little bit. I have a daughter who has autism. I have a cousin whose little boy is very, very, very autistic, nonverbal. But I hope he doesn't have a memory of being three and four years old and hope that he doesn't remember being given to somebody else. And I say that because when I was three years old, I had a two-year-old sister, and she lived with us for two years, and my mother rehomed her. My mother put her in foster care at two years old, and that's where she lived until she was 18, and I did not know her growing up, and I always wanted a sister. I knew I had a sister. I remembered her. I remembered playing with her, and I remember the day she left. I remember the day that she was given away. And I never knew why she had to go. So anyway, I don't wish that on anybody. And I hope Huxley doesn't have any memory of it whatsoever. So that's all I have to say today, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'd really appreciate it. Hit that like button and please consider subscribing to my channel as I am trying to let it grow. And I appreciate you stopping by. Peace. Until next time.